OK, so who's to blame for the shameful scenes involving Liverpool fans before their Champions League final with Real Madrid? And why is this argument quite so polarised? As the row intensifies, there's an elephant in the room that's not been spoken about by the British media, UEFA or the French government. Why has no one mentioned the horrors of Heysel? Arguably, one of the underlying reasons travelling fans from Merseyside were treated more harshly than they deserved. The automatic response of Liverpool fans is to reject all charges against them, despite allegations of counterfeit tickets on an industrial scale, and thousands even travelling without tickets at all, following encouragement by their own manager to do so. It will be absolutely fantastic. Surely for once it's time for Liverpool supporters to accept some responsibility. Ever since the shame of the Heysel disaster back in 1985, Liverpool fans have been on Europe's blacklist. So it's not surprising the French were on red alert when the British media ran stories about thousands of Liverpool fans travelling without tickets and the known problem of counterfeit tickets in mass circulation. It's understandable that Liverpool Football Club and the media insist the French police crossed the line by using tear gas and pepper spray after first causing congestion by filtering fans into severely overcrowded spaces. The French have countered by blaming Liverpool supporters who arrived with forged tickets or without any tickets at all. As we've heard, the French authorities claim up to 40,000 fans with counterfeit tickets travelled to Paris and some fans tried to enter the stadium without any tickets at all. Whatever mistakes the police and stewards at the stadium made in dealing with the problem in such a heavy-handed manner, you can't get away from the fact this was a situation created, at least in part, by a significant percentage of Liverpool fans who contributed to ruining the occasion for their fellow supporters. In this age of mobile phones and social media, we've seen many videos of the consequential mayhem. The British media instinctively defend Liverpool fans, spinning the narrative their way, ignoring the chaos the media themselves helped to create. Let's be honest here. In the countdown to kick-off, the media were actively cheerleading Liverpool fans for the following storylines. 1. It was boasted that up to 100,000 Liverpool fans travelled to Paris when their allocation was only 20,000. 2. Jurgen Klopp was quoted urging fans to travel to the French capital whether or not they had tickets. I think Paris is big enough to go there without a ticket and have a good time, said Klopp. So if you don't get a ticket, you know, so don't want to invite now people to Paris, but this time it's big enough. 3. It was widely reported that Liverpool's own fans were actively selling fake tickets and sharing the stories all over social media. 4. Fans even made banners about travelling without tickets. It was all a big hoot until they all arrived outside the stadium and then it all kicked off. It's not really surprising the French responded by taking extreme caution. Thankfully, this time, there were no serious injuries and the match did go ahead, albeit 35 minutes late. There were no such problems at the Real Madrid end, of course, it should be said, but the media here in the UK love to blame foreigners. And there's been an obvious campaign to defend Liverpool fans who at the very least contributed to the shambolic scenes before the biggest match in club football. At this stage, let me stress, I do have the utmost respect for honest, law-abiding football fans who travel the world to support their football team. And that includes many Liverpool fans who passionately support their club and arrived in Paris with every right to celebrate their team's appearance in yet another European final. An impressive achievement ultimately overshadowed by the pre-match chaos and magnified by the disappointment of defeat. Sadly, that's not the whole story. Liverpool have a high percentage of travelling fans who have a history of letting their side down. Fans who disrespect their rivals at home and abroad. Fans who think nothing, whatever the consequences, of trying to enter a stadium with forged tickets or without any ticket whatsoever. Perhaps they were emboldened by watching fan anarchy at Wembley last year, when England supporters gatecrashed the Euro finals. In French eyes, the English have form. 
even if Liverpool fans do consider themselves Scouse and not English. The truth is, many Liverpool fans were out of order in Paris, and it's not the first time. Far from it. They've done so on many occasions. After the 2007 Champions League final in Athens, UEFA described Liverpool fans as the worst in Europe, after ticketless fans caused mayhem in the Greek capital. At the time, UEFA declared Liverpool fans had been involved in more incidents in Europe than any other club over the previous four years. But the worst example of Liverpool's guilty fans causing absolute carnage came at the infamous European Cup final of 1985. Fourteen Liverpool supporters were convicted of involuntary manslaughter when 39 Juventus fans were killed in the Heysel disaster. English clubs received a five-year ban from European football as a consequence. But the British media rarely talk about the horror and shame of Heysel. It's been conveniently forgotten. Some would say ignored. We all know about the tragedy of Hillsborough that followed four years later. It's well known that Liverpool Football Club always avoid playing first-team matches on the 15th of April as a mark of respect to their fans who tragically died in Sheffield on that horrific Saturday afternoon at the end of the 80s. But therein lies a hypocrisy that alienates fans of so many other clubs. The date of Liverpool's victory parade at the weekend, celebrating this season's domestic cup double, shows a staggering lack of consideration for the Italian fans who perished in Heysel. As many have said since, it was a shocking lack of respect by Liverpool Football Club to stage those celebrations around the streets of Liverpool on what was the 37th anniversary of that horrific tragedy in Brussels. Italian fans who lost their lives were crushed when a wall collapsed in the Heysel Stadium after Liverpool fans broke through the segregation behind the goal and attacked Juve supporters pinned in to the corner of the stadium. It's these indelible memories of the past and the subsequent poor record of their fans in Europe that now follows Liverpool whenever they turn up for a major final. So, let's not be so quick to criticise the French for being on the defensive when half of Merseyside descends on their capital city. At the end of the day, no one died in Paris. The match was delayed to allow Liverpool fans to safely enter the stadium. Of course, many innocent people had their match day experience terrorised by what went on outside the stadium in those traumatic scenes before the game. But as I said earlier, it's time that Liverpool fans accept some responsibility, because failure to do so will forever antagonise those offended by the actions of some of their supporters. Liverpool is a proud city with many wonderful people. But please stop defending the indefensible. Some criticism is justified, regardless of any mistakes made by the French. Liverpool fans, please don't always automatically tell us it's never your fault, because we know that's just not true.